Hello, my name is Stevie Martin with the VIA Serviceability Engineering Team. This video is about the Agile Communication Environment ACE Alarms. We're going to take a look at alarms in the Avaya Agile Communication Environment. When you first log into the environment, you can immediately see any current active alarms by looking in the center of your screen, or you can look at alarm banner in the upper right hand side that breaks it down to critical, major, minor, and warnings. If you select one of the areas from the active alarms banner, it'll take you into the alarm screen just showing those specific alarms, all the critical alarms, all the major, all the minor, or all the warnings. If you select current active alarms in the middle of the screen that we're looking at now, it would take you to the alarm window and show all the active alarms. The other way to access the alarm window is go fault active alarm and when you get into this screen you can search on system ID or component ID. The component IDs that are available to you are based upon what alarms are active for that component in the alarm panel. If we query on all, every active alarm in the system will be brought up. The view that we have here is the same page you see if you click on the current active alarms that we showed on the login page. Some of the basic things you can do with alarms is Select all the alarms at once, clear all the selections, select all unacknowledged alarms, or select all acknowledged. Note the little banner right hand side that pops up. For in this instance, there were no acknowledged alarms to select. Selecting an alarm and acknowledge it means you're indicating to other operators that you've seen and are currently investigating that alarm. The alarm will be grayed out and then will be selectable by selecting acknowledged alarms. You can clear an acknowledged or unacknowledged alarm, but if it's Still an active alarm, the alarm will reoccur and show back up in the alarm screen. In an alarm screen, to gain additional information about a specific alarm, you select it. There are several things to note when you come into one of these alarm screens with additional information. The alarm code, the probable calls, and the remedial action. Also in the uh, additional information window, you can bring up the recovery tree for this alarm. And this is where you would use the alarm code. Recovery trees those help guides to give overviews of how to recover some alarms and also where to go collect the log information. When you come into the troubleshooting page, if you don't know exactly what type of alarm it is or where to look, you can always go by the index of alarms using the alarm ID. Our particular alarm code was 5011107, so we'd search for that in this list. And this title was Service Provider Experiencing SIP 5XX Error Messages. The small blue box to the right of each one is a link to bring up that specific troubleshooting page. In that page, you will see several items that will tell you how to view performance metrics. And it will also show you where the alarm logs are written to. For this particular alarm, the alarm logs are written to the file alarmlog.xml. And it also specifies there's some error metrics that are written to a separate file, in this case for the service provider and the name of the uh, log file. The service metrics just give you pretty much the number of alarms or errors generated for that particular issue. And also shows the bottom of the page how to retrieve those logs. After you review the troubleshooting page, you can come back to your alarm page and go up and collect the logs or look at the event browser for additional information. To get the logs, you would go fault. Logs download. The logs download screen is broken up into metric data, event log, ACE core log, standard output, and miscellaneous. In the event log screen, we see at the very top the alarm log.xml that the error was copied into. Now, this particular error we're looking at is old. It may not be in this particular file, but in a live system, you're checking real time and the log you want will be here. And to acquire the metric data log, you would simply go into the metric data tab and scroll down to the file you're looking for and downloading it by clicking on the link on the right hand side. You would review these logs on the desktop for information you may need to help resolve the issue. The other place to acquire information is from the event browser. You find it by going fault event browser. Before we go in the event browser, we want to look at the alarm that we're taking a closer look at and get the time it was generated. This specific alarm was generated on February 24th at 4.27 p.m. So you go back up to Fault, 
an event browser. The reason I check the time is that in a system with thousands of users, you have a very large number of events. If you just query on all, it can be very difficult to sort through them. Or even by selecting on the category of source or severity even, you may have a problem. You have the exact time. You can tell it exactly where to look. So we tell the system to look on February 24th. We would start at 4 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. If we think there still be a lot of logs, we can still narrow it down further with the system ID, your source, your category, which in this case is an alarm, and your severity. If you know this particular one is a warning. Once you set up the search parameters you want, you select Query. Once the events for the parameters you specified are brought up, you can select the one you want to take a look at to get more information. The event browser gives you a little bit more information in order to help you debug the issue along with the logs and the content of the alarm itself. Once you've clicked on your information and resolved the issue, you can go back to Fault, Active Alarms, bring up your alarms, and if the problems are resolved, the system will clear the alarm from the list. You can also clear the alarm yourself if you wish, manually. If you want additional information about handling, monitoring, and maintenance of alarms in ACE, please refer to the Agile Communication Environment Fault and Performance Management document. The document found at support.avaya.com. Locate the release which is a reference for ACE and scroll down to the Maintenance and Troubleshooting section. Thank you for your time today. I hope this information was useful. We welcome comments, questions, and feedback at mentor.avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. Thank you for choosing Avaya.